and it was really cool just to even see both really strong women just fighting each other. And having seen her work before, that is like just one percent of like the stuff she could do. To me, it, the, the fight wasn't that long enough. I wish there were more. But anyway, um, that's just... <laughs> <laughs> we wanted more screen time with yeah. Diana Lee. <laughs> Welcome back, it's Michelle and Miguel. We're Filipino American siblings and professional artists. So today we're gonna do another art critique. If this is your first time, we do critiques on speed drawing videos that we have done. And here next to me is a binder full of the portraits that I've drawn in these speed drawing videos. And so today we will be reviewing Diana Lee Inosanto. My first portraits and my most favorite. So I'm pretty excited to look back and see what I've done and what made this one special. And, and yeah. we also want to thank Diana Lee for checking it out. We were so happy to see that you enjoyed the video. So um, shout out to you and we're going to get started. And hi, in case you're watching, <laughs> it's nice to <laughs> This know. is my brother, <laughs> the shy one. Um, all right, let's go. Okay. Diana Lee Inosanto is a martial artist and stunt woman. I sound like a Her father, Dan Inosanto, <laughs> was a training partner of Bruce Lee. And Bruce was So, the unfortunately, it seems that you kind of got halfway through um, before realizing you didn't start your recording. So, um, yeah. you already see a foundation for her face and even a little bit of like line work. Um, but uh, now you're doing the exact opposite of what you talked before of adding hair before doing other stuff but now you're adding hair after kind of establishing some specifics of yeah. the face so uh, it's cool Diana's godfather the name Lee in her name in fact was taken from Bruce Diana growing up was surrounded by the martial arts world studying many forms including Jeet Kune Do, boxing, fencing. And just to critique my own mistake, I believe I was using black. I can't tell, but it looks really dark. And if it is black, um, don't do what I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the right way to go about it, so I'm... And of course, Filipino Shame martial arts, which she learned from her father. Diana was taught to fight as a little in regards to what you said then because uh if you're if you if you use darker tones or colors such as like black or even dark um like red up especially using with soft pastels it's a little bit hard to kind of fix those mistakes so that's why he's kind of slapped his hand for some reason but um i noticed you're now coming from the bottom two up of defining the facial features now so um technically you started in the nose area and Usually for me, I start with the nose a lot, so that kind of helps define like the rest of the... Yeah, starting from the yeah. center, as I like to call it. Mm -hmm. Pearl, introduced to fighting as a game, intentionally in a playful manner. According to Diana, the legendary Bruce Lee was a role model of diversity to her. Bruce Lee was known after all to have broken down racial- If you, this is your first time in our channel, we actually did a Bruce Lee um, speed drawing crit art critique, so we'll have that linked on somewhere here. Barriers in the 60s and 70s. Along with her father, this instilled the values of acceptance, inclusion, and representation that Diana carries with her to this day. As a respected teacher and stunt choreographer, she has appeared on the cover of numerous martial arts magazines and was named Woman of the Year by Black Belt Magazine. So what are some things that help you define Diana Lee's like, face? Like, what, what is something that you notice about her oh, features right. that define her look, basically? I was just about to say that uh, I was having trouble because of that. Um, she has a very dynamic face, meaning to say that depending on you know where you, how uh, what picture you look at when you Google search um, pictures of her, she could be 
have a long face, sometimes square-ish. And the one I chose was just like a classic front view, which is like a perfect reference for any portrait you want to draw. You know, you want to have just a, a flat, um, full, like, frontal view of, of a person's face to get like their true essence. And so here I try to go for like the elongated look, because to me she has a long face. Like not like long long, but like she her, her chin is prominent, her nose is prominent, uh, her eyes, everything. And the trouble I had with her is, um, so ethnic makeup plays a big role. And so because she's biracial, I do see both like the Caucasian and Asianness in her. So that was kind of tricky to figure out, okay, how do I balance her look? And it gets so complicated uh, beyond that, but in general, you just want to get like the basic, okay, this is a long face, this is a square face, and um, in the rest, you just gotta trust your instincts <laughs> and follow the techniques, so. Mm -hmm. in, in 2009, much of Diana's film contributions include I, Frankenstein, Fast and Furious, Resident Evil, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and Walker, Texas Ranger, just to name a few. As an expressive actress herself, Inosanto is active in the Southern California Theater as a member of the Lodestone Theater Ensemble, an Asian American theater group. So, fun fact, she was recently in the Mandalorian episode. Yeah, the, the one with um, Ashoka mm -hmm. and where... She the... was the magistrate? Um, yes, the magistrate. And they had this really... Uh, epic battle with her and um, Ashoka and it was really cool just to even see both really strong women just fighting each other. And having seen her work before, that is like just one percent of like the stuff she could do. To me, it, the, the fight wasn't that long enough. I wish there were more. But anyway, um, that's just... <laughs> we wanted more screen time with yeah. Diana Lee. <laughs> In 2008, she worked with the East-West Players, serving as martial arts choreographer on the world premiere of the play Be Like Water, as well as directing and writing an independent movie called The Sensei, which tackles the unspoken and taboo topics in martial arts, such as sexuality. So this part with the hair... Gosh, I'm breaking so many rules. <laughs> um, <laughs> This is really this was really tricky because her hair is super dynamic and with a lot of dark South Asian Southeast Asian hair It's very tricky because it's not black black, but it's like really 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 dark brown So depending on the lighting uh, It plays a big role on what the color of the hair would be so the reference picture I used is her hair was like really black but to me I wanted to capture the, the true essence of the hair, which it really isn't totally black. So I had to work around here like, okay, I'm just going to assume it's black. But then I went back and added other color tones. Do not do that. Do the opposite. <laughs> what I should have done is start with the dark brown, which I did in the beginning. But I went immediately for black and I should not have done that. And now it made the process even longer because I had to really press hard on the other colors because black is very, very powerful and hard to fix. So there's nothing yeah. there's again, there's nothing wrong breaking rules as an artist because, you know, that's part of being an artist too is once you know the rules, all you gotta do is break them. Yeah. But the reason why Miguel is explaining this process because it's all about efficiency as well. And so this was part of um what you used to do as part of your job is to draw people efficiently. And so you couldn't have time to kind of uh, be a little bit creative, but for you just to establish certain like um, important parts of someone's like you know um, features, so just to not slow down on the process, but it's just kind of like just following the steps so that you don't have to like worry right. about fixing mistakes. So. so here it worked out fine in the end, only because I was proficient enough to deal with the consequences. But if I had been a newbie. Uh, this would have been a mess <laughs> if I didn't follow the rules, so just so you know. And AIDS. I found Diana to be inspiring and a well-spoken woman, 
whose personality, fighting style, and beliefs inspire me as an artist and as someone of Filipino identity. We're not really critiquing the video, like all that stuff, because we're mostly focused on the art itself. But even if you notice that when the exposure is changing and all that, you could still see Diana. Like her her features are pretty straight on, and I think is pretty close to what she looks like. So I think Miguel did a good job establishing those like important parts of the face too because those are like the darkest parts and like that's what that's will mostly show up um even when o overexposed myself let me know other fascinating facts about this person in the comments don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel see you on the next video Thank you. Yeah, so I think it's a good choice that you did with that. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, so overall I felt pretty good, but what do you think? I mean, this is actually one of my favorite pieces that you've done. If you're not familiar with our channel at all, Miguel does like a bazillion portraits. It's something that he, he did every day. Like he had, he made like two portraits a day and that was like um, something that we did last summer is to have all of that. So actually, if you want to look at the real photo, again, all of these portraits are life-size. So this is the closest we would ever get near Diana Lee, if she was like right here. <laughs> um, that this is how big the drawings are. And so I think um, the video kind of shows a little bit of what the actual portrait looks like, but I think, again, it doesn't do justice to the actual piece of art that's in front of you. So what I see here, again, the colors are soft. They they really match the like natural tones of a, a living person, you know, with all the blood in the skin. And she just looks really elegant. The uh, one more her. And one more thing I wanted to add, um, I forgot to earlier, is the, the outlining is something that some uh, portrait artists do. Uh, the way I was trained, I, I barely do outlines that wasn't like a thing but in my case since I'm on my own uh, I think outlines are great and that's something that maybe you could consider uh, outlines do a good way of separating the negative to positive space if done in the right way so in this case I don't use black I use dark brown or any color that is closer to the skin tone of the person so uh, that's something you could do, just a little pro tip, but yeah. Yeah, thanks for checking us out. If you have any more questions about the process, is there something that we completely just missed like a point in explaining what we were watching? This is all like just laying it out to you guys, how I see Miguel's work as another artist, how Miguel also sees what he does and wish he could do better. We're gonna do some more of these kind of critiques in the future, so let us know what you think, and don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya!